So I'm very proud to be an academic GP at the Department of General Practice here at um, the University of Melbourne. And I was uh, very delighted to receive the invitation to participate in today's session. Um, but I really wasn't sure what I would talk about because overcoming health challenges together is such a huge topic. And obviously this year has put that into focus more than ever before. But not long after uh, I agreed to talk today, I received a text message from my father and it was a simple message. It said, your grandmother's anniversary, 63 years today, I put a lily on her grave. And there was a photo of that grave. It's not a grave with a big headstone. In fact, in the scheme of things, it's relatively new. Because at the time that my grandmother died, the family had no money for a gravestone. Neither did they have money when only nine days later, my grandfather also died. I'm not sure of what exactly, only what I've been told by other members of the family was that he died of a broken heart. I cannot imagine what it would have been like to lose two parents within such a short period of time. There are a few photos, some medals from the Second World War and a belt made of butterfly wings. And my grandfather was a fisherman. But really, I don't know much more. But I understand that poverty resulted in my father leaving school at the age of 14, travelling to a small town alone in northern Queensland to work in a post office, and later forging his grandmother's signature to join the army and eventually to do two tours of Vietnam. I have always looked up to my father and I'm in wonderment about the opportunities that I have had in my life when I compare what I started off with to what he has had to endure. He was always busy and he worked a lot and he worked hard. And despite not finishing high school, he ended up being a high ranking customs official and he was responsible at the time for one of the biggest heroin drug busts in Australian history. But you can only work so hard and so long before things you have witnessed and things that you have had to do can come back to haunt you, to overwhelm you and to stop you from being so able to work so hard. And at the time when my father was at risk of dying from a broken heart, it was his GP that he credits as saving him. Our GP, Phil Glenatsis, who had his general practice six minutes walk from our home in Darwin, who had chased my sister around the consultation room when she wouldn't get her immunisations done. He saw us all as kids. He was the one who supported my father throughout this time. And later, as an intern, I can only really ever remember one consultant who congratulated me on my choice to become a GP. But my father thought it was the best choice that I could have made because he saw the value, because he saw the lives that could be saved and the hearts that perhaps I could help to stop from breaking. I felt very privileged to be a GP, but most of my work is invisible. It's about the diseases and the hospitalizations that are prevented, the reduction of complications, the being there for people that are going to need to go to the hospital or need medical support, no matter how much work they put into managing their health. Pre-COVID, 85% of Australians would visit a GP at least once a year. Two million people attending the over 7,000 general practices around the country each week. As GPs, we look after people from birth through to death and coordinate their care with other medical specialties, disciplines and carers. This makes us very flexible and it also makes us very flexible researchers. We can touch on pretty much every specialty we can use lots of different methodologies. And just as we are in our clinical work, we're very good collaborators. But even as a GP registrar, I didn't know that GPs did research. By chance, I was training at a practice at the same time as Professor Doris Young, and she was a previous head of Department of General Practice here and a continuing mentor to me. And she was working on the day that I saw an event at advertisement for an academic registrar position and I knocked on her door and that was the beginning of my academic general practice journey about 11 years or so ago now. So what has driven me to be an academic GP? 
Well, first and foremost, I want to be part of optimising general practice so that we can optimise the health outcomes for people in the communities that we serve. General practice is not simply about coughs and colds. We have to have a good working knowledge of around 165 different medical conditions to manage only 85% of presentations. And GP research is, of course, underpinned by questions. For me, important ones are things like, well, mo models of care might facilitate general practice care best, and how might technology assist? And so this has underpinned our Future Health Stay program, which we're leading in collaboration with our partners at Western Health, working with our stakeholders at Kidney Health Australia, Heart Foundation, Diabetes Victoria and Stroke Foundation. And starting with chronic kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes and cancer, we're developing systems for audit, quality improvement, clinical decision support, as well as identifying patients who might be eligible to participate in trials. What happens in a general practice consultation? Well, Medicare items do not tell the story. General practice electronic medical records have been in use since the 1990s and store a wealth of information. So we've developed the Data for Decisions program, which incorporates the patron data set. We have approximately 120 general practices contributing data from their electronic medical records to this program. And next year, we'll conduct our first trial evaluating Future Health Day with our outcome measures all derived from electronic medical record data in the patron data set. And together with our colleagues at the University of Toronto, we've started Intrepid, a group of GPs from Norway, Hong Kong, England, Singapore, US and Sweden, who are going to work together to facilitate research to using general practice data sets internationally. How can quality improvement activities be delivered at scale? Well, antimicrobial resistance is an international health concern and a research priority. And whilst antimicrobial stewardship activities are funded and well established in hospitals, there's no continuous quality improvement activity in general practice, despite this being where the majority of antimicrobials for humans are prescribed at rates two times that of comparable countries. So we're working with the National Centre for Antimicrobial Stewardship and the Northwestern Melbourne Primary Health Network to address this. Lastly, how did general practice respond to COVID-19? Well, we worked with Altona North Medical Group who opened the first GP-led respiratory clinic in Victoria and the third in the country. We evaluated infection control, occupational health and safety and public safety. We looked at how the clinic demonstrated innovative use of technology, health assistants and scribes, drive-through testing with clinical assessment, and how they provided emotional support to their staff, and our findings of informed revisions to RACGP guidance for general practices setting up these clinics. Research is a team sport. In each position, different skills are required. Academic GPs, qualitative researchers, health informaticians, biostatisticians, clinical liaison staff, data scientists, professional staff, business development, legal, our general practice and consumer advisory panels. And none of this would be possible without the in excess of 600 general practices that are in VICREN, which is the Department of General Practice Research and Education Network. Without them, we don't have a research program or a reason for doing it in the first place. And they participate in research while juggling the complexity, the 15 minute appointments, paperwork, running a business within a fee for service model. And at a time when in things and schemes like investigator grants, we always have to talk about the I, 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 I really wanna acknowledge the we. This year has had many pressures for everyone, uh, personal and professional. But I think it's also important demonstrate the importance of primary care, although in some ways that too has been invisible. The next step is to acknowledge the importance of primary care research and the unique spill, skills that experienced primary care researchers, both GPs and non-GPs bring. So if you are working in a hospital or elsewhere, and you are embarking on a study or an intervention aimed at general practice and haven't involved a GP or primary care researcher from the start, please stop and consider why. And if you are or know a medical student that loved their general practice rotation, but they're not considering it as a career because you don't see an academic pathway, then please come and see us.
Discovering general practice research is a choice that should not have to be left to chance and our department is at your doorstep. This is part of my research family at the Department of General Practice in my research theme. Together with all my colleagues at the department, we are teaching medical students, providing fantastic research training, growing our profession, and developing the technology that underpins major research programs nationally. Together as a team, we are trying to make a difference, to try to prevent some of the broken hearts and to be there to care for them. They do. Thank you.